So why did I leave the police? Um, well, first of all, um, the bureaucracy and the red tape was getting ridiculous. It was getting worse day by day, if that's possible. Um, at the same time, we were going through uh, a spiritual awakening, um, which led us to realise that there was so much more to life. We realised the system that we were in was being used as a battery and ram to shut the masses up and keep everybody in line. And that just didn't sit right with us anymore. That's not what we were about. Our integrity was taking us somewhere else. Yes, yeah, Sarah and I, between us, actually served in the police force for 21 years. Me personally served for 16 years in some of the major cities such as Bir uh, Birmingham and London. But we began to become negative. It, be it began to become a smaller version of the larger control system. Uh, was controlling our lives. We were told when we could eat. You know, when you could sleep, days off were, were cancelled for no reason. They tried personally three times to, to bring me back from my honeymoon in the Maldives just to go to court when they didn't really need me. And it was basically getting a bit ridiculous. Uh, and when things start to take control of your life, then it's time to move on. Now, there, there was an in-joke that even on my days off, I used to take a blue light out with me to put it on my arm car. That That is how dedicated I was to, to the job, you know, I, I joined to help, I joined to serve and I, I, I joined to make a difference. But because of bureaucracy and red tape and government targets and manipulated crime figures, response times, and we basically weren't serving anybody. And when you work for the system that, you know, a judicial system that actually destroys justice, when you have courts that don't impose any any punishments, when you, have, when you have the CPS who are target driven, who won't take anything to court, regardless of the victims or the officers' wishes, because they may lose. You know, the, the only time CPS will take a, a case to court these days is when they've got a pretty pretty bang on 100%, 100% chance of winning. Otherwise, he doesn't go to court, so it reflects all on their figures. So we have a system, a, a judicial system, that destroys justice. The same as we now have universities, universities that destroy education, you know, government that de destroys democracy. You have a national health service that is destroying national health and, and all these things just, just calculated it makes you think you just you just want to get out of the system and step outside the box and, and it's only once you step outside that box you begin to realise what's actually out there and the potential. You know we are free spirits, we should not be contained within a box and we shouldn't be allowed to, to be told what to do. So if we can do it that is hope and more and more officers who we speak to are just looking for a way out. So say if we can do it then then there is out for the rest of us um since leaving you know we've bumped into ex-colleagues um all have the same sentiment none of them are happy at work everyone says that if they had something else to go to they would um and i think the purpose of this little video is to just let people know that the awakening is real um, it is happening police officers albeit it doesn't seem like it when you watch some videos on youtube and other places on the news etc but even police officers can wake up and I think we are two examples of that and we just want to let people know that there is hope, it is happening, it is real um, and everybody to sort of keep keep on in there because um, you know things are changing and uh, I think we stand testament to that. When we, actually, when we actually start to do the job with some thought and not just act like a robot and, and start to think what people are saying, you know it got to the stage when we are being asked to, to, to force someone into silence. Someone who was protesting with a valid point was being forced into, into keeping quiet. And we had to ask ourselves, how can we force this silence when actually empathise and appreciate what, the, what that process is saying? What many officers are not realising at the moment when they're, they're just blindly hitting people with batons and capping them and, and stopping them from, from having a voice is, if you shut the people up, you're next. And it's worth just bearing that in mind, you know, pe people have a valid point and they have to be listened to. How can we live in a democracy when no one has a voice? And I'll, I'll, the only warning I would say to officers is uh, at least think about what you're doing, because as I say, if these protesters get defeated, we're all next. with our awakening um, that everything, everyone, everything in existence is all connected. 
that everything is energy, um, that energy is all one. Um, it can never die, it always has been. It can be changed, it can be manipulated, but it's still all part of the same uh, existence. And each and every one of us is part of the same existence too. Um, so by hurting us, hurting each other, um, technically, in our minds, we're hurting a part of ourselves, we're actually hurting ourselves. Um, everybody's in it together, um, we need to sort of act that way. And days like today for us are beautiful, we can come out, we can connect with nature, which is a really, really important part, I think, uh, for everybody, because nature, the healing effects of nature are unbelievable. Um, we spend too much time, you know, ourselves included sometimes, you know, indoors, behind a computer, um, sort of cordoned off from, from the rest of the world, from nature, and it's really important to get back out and connect back up, um, and with each other as well, you know, we've all become quite secluded really to a degree um, on the whole, and I think we all need to get back and connect and realise that we are part of the same thing, we're part of the same earth, the same world, and that together, if we all stand together as one, we can change the world, we can make things happen, um, and so, yeah, I just think that's a really, really important point. One. Life is meant to be simple, it's not meant to be stressful. We sit here today at a local water park and nature is in complete harmony with each other. Everything is co coexisting together. We have the water, the trees, the sky and the earth. And we have our physical body which is a conduit and aerial to connect the energy between the two. So there's no need for stress. You know, society makes everything stressful. Society makes us continuously on the fly. You know, we need to get back to nature, get back to the harmony which, which we're all a part of because we, we are all part of of everything and everything is connected to, to a central point and we need to remember that and try and get back to to nature and start slowing ourselves down and actually thinking and, and freeing ourselves.